Hey everybody, it's Friday. Yes, that means we made it through another week. It is Friday, February 28th, the end of February in 2020. And it is time for Free Tip Friday. Yes, kids, that's what time it is. I'm gonna make sure that I can see all of you on social before I jump in and make sure that I can see you both on our Facebook feed and on our YouTube feed. I can see you guys jumping on over on Facebook and I know that you guys are waiting for me over on YouTube. I love it that I'm on your TV, Kathy. I love that part. Um, I can see that. I can see those comments. And let me make sure that I can see you guys on the Facebook feed. Okay. And I am ready. I hope my hair looks okay. We're coming in right made it. Let me adjust this to make sure that maybe I'll adjust it that way. There we go. All righty. Okay, everybody. It's Friday. We did it. We made it. We've been a little bit busy over here at Bead Shop Headquarters, I'll tell you. Um, a couple of things. I'm going to bring you guys up to speed on a couple of things. Just so you know what's shaken. Um, we had two of our wonderful team members move on to different, um, different uh, paths, I guess. Our wonderful Kara, who you know, our great Kara Skopazi. Um, she uh, took some time off to be with her mom who has since passed away so we're a little sorry about that and but Kara um, had to spend some time wrapping up stuff with her mom so we're short on Kara and our Jenny went on to a new opportunity so we've been working uh, we've been stretched just perhaps a touch thin here at uh, beadshop.com headquarters, but nothing we can't handle, of course. So, um, but I know Kara still jumps on from time to time on the Facebook group, which is great. Um, and she's certainly a big part of, both of them are a big part of our bead shop family. So we have a couple of new team members that you'll learn more about, but we're getting them up to speed in fulfillment. So thanks you guys for being patient. Um, always in the mornings, you know, I'm running around and I can't believe that now it's, you know, I look up at the clock. I'm all, oh my gosh, it's after 10. I got to get free tip Friday going. So sorry about that. Sorry I was a little bit late today, but um, I, uh, I have a fun show for you today. I took inspiration from our Krista and last week's show. Um, so this one is another shout out to our Krista Hennessy. Um, and that inspiration that we did with last week's show, the deep dive into vintage finds. Today we're going to have a deep dive into collars and bibs, um, which is a lot of fun. I think you guys are going to have fun. And I can see over here on our Facebook feed, um, I can see some of our design team is watching and ready. You know, I have a piece, and Kim is watching one of our design team members. I have a piece from Kim that has been... Um, I don't know, I guess I want to say simmering on the back burner using the collars. So I'll have that coming up too. Um, it's a really great piece with some stitching and stuff. And I think she posted it up on our bead shop, um, bead table group. Um, but it's going to, that'll be a great one, um, to share with you guys as well. So, um, so that one's coming up, but today, uh, I have some fun things a deep dive into uh, our colors and bibs and we're going to play around with some color some more because I think that really resonated with you guys. So let's see who's on. I love Michelle I had a dream that you and I were digging in some old warehouse digging through boxes and drinking dill pickle vodka and laughing and laughing. Girl, get down here. <laughs> Where, where are you? Where have you been all my life? I love that story. You know, I, I don't know if you guys have bead dreams or dream uh, uh, about your designs or bead shop or whatever, 
But once in a while, I'll come in and I'll tell Karen that I've had this crazy dream about Karen. I have dreams about her hair or doing things or whatever. So it was super funny. But I love that we're connected over the miles through beads and dreams and all of these things. I love that so much. Um, you know, our free tip Friday days are always kind of more of a laid back vibe, which I love. It gives me a moment to connect with you guys across the world. Um, which means so much to us here um, with uh, all of the camaraderie, I guess, and the fellowship and fun stuff like that. So because without you guys right here on the other side of my screen, right there, we wouldn't be here. So we really, really appreciate your shares, your likes, your good humor, your support of our small business, because as I say, without you guys, we would not be here. Um, and Janice, of course, is across the miles moderating. I can see her over here um, on the side on the YouTube chat. And I can see you guys over here on my Facebook feed, which is great. Uh, Dessa is going, what, pickle vodka? We were having a little conversation. I think it was in the, maybe it was in the Facebook group or I don't know. It could have been on Facebook or whatever. And uh, Chris and I, Chris's family, my husband, Chris, you guys know Chris and shipping. His family is from Canada and dill pickle vodka is a big thing over in Canada. So whenever we go, we might imbibe a little bit, maybe, I don't know. And thanks you guys still good, um, <laughs> good thoughts for my hair. I don't know. Friday, thank goodness we made it, right? All right. Um, so uh, Janice, I think they can see me. I don't know, check your check your screen. Am I in full screen? I look like I'm in full screen. At least I think I am. We'll see. Check your, check your screen and make sure. Um, okay. So, um, let's take a look you guys, um, in front, what I've got in front of me here. Let me come over here and let's, let's chat about beads. Shall we? We shall. All right. Here we go. I have some things in front of me, some palettes, and I think that those palettes really, um, really resonated, I think, with you guys last week. Um, the ones that Krista, when I handed Krista those boxes, you know, and if you guys are ever around and you want to come on Free Tip Friday with me, just shoot me an email. I'll, I'll put you on camera on the other side. I'll hand you a box and say, go palette this and let's... <laughs> Let's go in front of 300 people and play around with beads, right? Um, so I did this in the spirit of Krista um, and pulled out three boxes, pulled out three different components and literally started tossing things into the boxes, okay? And, um, oh, I see Gita's also on our Facebook feed. I'm sorry, Gita, I did not mean to acknowledge you, but Gita's up and running and um, moderating over on our Facebook page, um, the Facebook feed. Thank you, as always, from across the miles, Gita. It looks like you're having a good beginning of uh, spring and summertime over there, over, over on your side of the world. So thank you ever so for all of your, um, for all of your work that you do for us every week. Um, so the color palettes that I have here in front of me, I pulled, I guess, what was resonating with me right now. Coming up, um, you know, Brittany was on with me on Wednesday and we had a really fun time um, sharing the Entwined project with you. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get, I'm gonna text Karen in a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get Karen to bring in the samples so I can show you guys. Um, I forgot to grab them, but uh, the finished ones, Brittany finished them for me. But Brittany is crafting a show for you guys. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. She's going to be on on Friday the 13th, the Facebook Live. It's actually the Free Tip Friday, but we're going to dive into a couple of Brittany projects. And we were working on color palettes um, with what we were um, making for the project. And we pulled super saturated, super spring colors. And I just thought, you know what? I'm kind of in to these super saturated kind of colors. This one may be a little less so saturated. It's a little more nuanced. 
But I thought I would really go for it with this like electric blue today and this vivid, vivid red. Um, I, I try, I don't know about you guys, but I, uh, I don't know. I, I try and expand my horizons once in a while. I mean, Janice has known me for almost 30 years, right? And if you ask Janice what Kate's favorite bead is, not only is it this brass shadow, but if I had to go for a color, it would be Janice Answer Me from Across the Miles. That's exactly right. It will be Montana Blue for sure. And so getting kind of out of that Montana Blue or that kind of green color way, um, Sometimes I have to give myself a little bit of a poke, okay? So uh, so I tried to pull these palettes. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with some of the samples that are from back in the day when I made these pieces. This is the collar that I did with the lapis pieces, these collar components. And I, I just love them. My first bead, Janice, was the carnelian cube, which I still have that I bought at, I don't know, after like my first week at bead shop, I bought that carnelian cube. It's on my desk, right? Um, so let me, let me pull this a little bit tighter so you guys can see this. This is that bronze collar. I just love it. And it's kind of hard for you guys to see. Let me lift it a little bit so you can see this bronzite. Now, I want to tell you a little bit, or the lapis and bronzite. I want to tell you a little bit about how um, these are put together, okay? And how these, uh, how these are cut, okay? So let me get this piece over here. Here's the turquoise one, you can see that, okay? There it is, this one. I wanna talk about this in a minute. And let me get the actual piece here. So when I was in Tucson last year, um, I, saw giant chunks. I'm going to take this one out of the, the package so you can see it so it's not too shiny. I saw giant chunks of this kind of semi-precious material that was in these big, oh, there's Dakota stone. There's Kayla from Dakota right there on our Facebook feed. Hey, Kayla, it's good to have you. Um, I saw these big, big chunks of like rough is what they call it when stones before they've been cut into into beads, right? Um, the rough comes in these big chunks, and what it is is it's resin, and it's been it's kind of like the leftovers of the different stones that are embedded in this resin, and then the pieces are cut, okay, and so they're lapidaried. I guess, I don't know if that's the right term for them, but it's kind of cool. And so these have a little bit of, um, it's not really a plasticky feel, but they definitely don't feel like regular stones, right? But they're so, I fell in love with these when I first saw that Dakota stones had them. And so the cool thing about these guys is, and we have them in some different sizes and flavors and stuff like that. We've got plenty of these um, lapis ones with the bronzite. Um, and we'll get them back in too. We'll, we'll restock some of these. I, I love them a lot. And um, so the way that I strung them uh, before from the show, and you can look up the Opulent Collar project, but you can see I spread them apart a little bit. And what a surprise, I used the little shadows and I used actually some dragon scales in there. You can see that. And I put them on little head pins and I put those head pins on jump rings and then strung them up, okay? But what you can also do with these, and I've had this one knocking around my desk and so I wanted to share it with you. I made one of these collars, it was years ago um, that I made them and I metal smithed a piece that went in the center. And so I had the center uh, piece kind of left over from it. Um, and uh, Melanie's asking if these are lighter, and they are lighter. I mean, they have some weight to them, but they're not so heavy that they're gonna be uncomfortable to wear, for sure. Um, the cool thing about this, this is the turquoise one. What I did, and it's kind of hard for you to see there, this is a little rivet that I, a little screw that I 
soldered this piece to and stuff and put through. I drilled this piece actually with my drill. I have a drill press, but if you have a Dremel with a drill, you can do that too. You just want to make sure that you dip this in some water and drill them wet. And so you could definitely put holes in these pieces, especially these larger ones. And you just go low and slow and uh, keep, whoops, keep the piece wet and drill them through. They're really easy to drill. Um, especially because they have a lot of resin, you know, they're held together with the resin and stuff. So it's, it's really easy. Again, you want to wear, if you're drilling any kind of stones or shell or anything like that, you want to wear a mask, of course, um, and you want to make sure and drill them wet to keep the, um, the dust down from coming up at you uh, in your environment. But you can see the side, it's just the same as this little piece. And again, this is just something that I threw together, well, you know, soldered set of stone and then just put it through with that little screw you can also see the holes are fairly big on these pieces so this is a 0.5 millimeter leather you could string it on leather like this and i use some of our wood beads this is a six millimeter dakota stone i think that i strung and some of those big shadows so there's a lot of ways that you can kind of play around with this you can see this isn't finished at all but it's kind of a fun and different take on this. You could, these are also prime for um, epoxying, like a piece on the top. And I didn't really bring a, um, a charm on here, but I, do, I did pull these, um, uh, these scarab beads that we have, right? So if, I'm going to get a little tighter in there. This is a perfect blank slate for um, attaching things on the top, right? So let's say that I wanted to maybe glue one of these scarab stones to the center of that. I would do that either with my E6000, which is here, which we carry in these small ones, or my zap glue. You could do it with Zap as well. I've used both of these. E6000 is great for gluing pieces like this on the surface of your stones. If I were doing that, I would go ahead and um, I might get a maybe a little piece of sandpaper and roughen up the spot just slightly where I'm going to do my gluing. And I'd extrude a bit of that E6000 out onto a toothpick, put that there, and then get my bead and just place it. The thing about glue is, kids, when you're gluing these pieces, you want to let them sit 24 hours. You really want to let that glue cure, okay, before you move it around too much, okay? So just let it, um, just let it sit, and that's the secret to successful gluing, um, is letting things cure so that they don't, um, so that they, you know, they the glue has time to settle and cure. Um, so let me show you again the back of this piece. I'm going to get in kind of tight. And this is, I think, a good way to finish. Oops, let me get it in there. A lot of your pieces. This is just um, our chain link here. I'm going to get kind of tight in there too so you guys can see it. Lynn, you could use two-part epoxy for sure if you had it. I like using two-part epoxy as well. Um, the But I find that the E6000 also works pretty good. I mean, not pretty good. It works very well also. So you can... Um, uh, you can use either. If you have that two-part epoxy, by all means, uh, go ahead and, and try it out. Again, it needs to be cured um, as well. I'm just um, texting Karen to bring those samples in real quick here from Wednesday, please. Perfect. Um, and so it's kind of a fun and uh, kind of a cool way to close this up. It makes this adjustable here in these loops. Um, and this is our jumbo swivel clasp. And let me show you, if you don't, if you haven't done some stringing in a while here, the doing the soft flex, it's the soft flex fine, I think the 0 0.014, see how on the loop I covered it with little 11-aught beads? 
that's a nice way to close it as well. Okay, and the zap also will work for sure, Lynn. What I wouldn't use, oh, here's Jordan with all my samples. Thank you. Um, and I'll put them aside. We'll talk about those at the end. Uh, the hypo cement isn't as viscous um, as you want it to be. It's great for like gluing in rhinestones and pearls and the ends of knots and thread and stuff. But for something like this, if you're gluing a piece on top of another piece, I would use the Zap or the E6000. So I want to kind of dump out the color palette or the beads that I that I grabbed uh, to kind of play around with this. Now, literally, you guys, I am going right off the cuff playing around with this. And I want to just show you kind of when I begin to think about a project. This is kind of how I tackle it. So let's say that I had a project to make that incorporated this collar. So I might start with getting that collar out. So let me get it here front and center. And the palette that I went in and chose, I just came in and grabbed kind of a monochromatic palette that I liked the looks of. Now this color to me had a fairly Egyptian feel to it. So that's why I grabbed these scarabs right off the bat. Let me get in a little tighter so you can see that. These beads are uh, Czech glass made um, with that little kind of hint of a scarab um, pattern on the front. I really love them. And again, I think that idea of maybe gluing those on the front of maybe even five of these or something might be kind of cool. You'll still have the hole that's open. So you could use, let me grab here, I grabbed a bin of like random findings too. Because who wants to be too prepared for this, right? Not me. I like going right off the cuff for this. Um, what I would do is you could, with the scarab beads, is a, um, I'm, I'll open these up. There we go. With the scarabs, I could put a head pin down them, right? And then I could epoxy them on. And then I could add my dangles down there, right? I also pulled some of our faceted check glass, right? So I could come in and our faceted check glass drops I just love. And I could put those, I could attach those below. Okay? I could make these swing a little bit. Like if I connected these up top, I could do that. It might be a little clunky visually. So maybe I'd use some chain, right? Do my loop here, attach some chain and then add those drops below. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just guessing here, I don't know. Speaking of chain, what I could do is, like I did in between here, right, with these guys, I could incorporate another piece of chain coming down in between, and let's use another fave I could get a little lower, you know, hang them maybe a little lower like this and get some of those spindles in there, okay? And then I could use like in between these, uh, this is the 414F, the matte uh, blue, um, that's a 6 aught. I also grabbed this cube because I liked how it looked in the light. I could go in between, spread this collar out. I've got the six millimeter matte lapis from Dakota Stones, beautiful. You could throw in the six millimeter bronze fire polish and that's the cornflower blue right here. That cornflower blue um, uh, eight millimeter rondelle. I could glue the spindle. The spindle would look great Look at, I could glue that spindle on and I could drop 
I could drop those below if I wanted. Okay. And then I also brought, these are um, our currants. And the currants are this kind of the recycled glass, African glass bead. So we could spread these out. Let me move this. Let me open this up. I'm going to take a few off here. And then this, it just depends on like how many It also makes these guys go a little bit of a longer way, right? Because you could split them up. But here's, we could throw those currants in between. Let me just take these off. There we go. And so this is exactly how I do it, you guys, when I am prepping for your show, right? So I could also hang Right, so there's a lot of space in there if I use that current. Look at how nice that drop looks. Coming from in between. Look at that. What do you think? I think they look great. I could have chain coming. I could string a piece of chain there have it come down to catch that dangle, come up on the other side of that current, right? That would look really good. I like them separated too, Margaret. I agree. I like the um, visual, the negative space that are, um, kind of evolves from using these. You could, if that current, if that blue is like a little too chunky or whatever for you, we could audition that lapis, that matte lapis could go in, right, in between. So it would kind of look like this. But you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? And then that could drop in between the four. That might be cool, okay? So that's this, and I also pulled, I like this kind of funky, I think this is stone luster gray, um, the six millimeter. I kind of like the color that it kind of gives that. Uh, we could, instead of the drops, pull those scarabs in there. And there's plenty of scarabs on that strand. So you could also instead use them in between with some lapis here. Okay. So here's, here's this palette. I'm going to pull this aside and I'm going to morph right into my next palette with my next um with my next colorway oh i also these are our um tides out and i don't i can't remember what color these guys are in tides out but look at when these are strung this way right this also I think looks just killer with that let me tighten it in there we go can you see that and then these on the top I might actually have to make this necklace colors were really in, I made a lot of colors back in the day Marina thank you Janice um, the collars, we made a lot of collars back in the late 90s, early 2000s. It was kind of a style that I really loved to make. Those do kind of look like little leaves, don't they? That could go in there. There we go. I think you can get a pretty good view of how that might look. It looks kind of opulent, right? I'm going to give that a quick photog just so I can remember it. Click. You can hear the shutter. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. 
Um, then, yeah, I probably would use copper. Um, Cindy's asking maybe copper for those. I might use copper with this, though I might pull brat. What I did, I pulled these. These are pebbles in um, brass, which I love how they look. And you can put them right in the middle between there. This would also make a great earring companion for this. Okay. Yeah, I kind of dig this look too. And you can make this a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, just depending on what works for you. Um, I want to show you this next one. Let me show you the sample and then we'll kind of move into that one as well. Tammy Drennan, I know you're watching. I always think of you with this collar. I don't know why. Maybe it's because you made one or you loved these collars or I don't know. But this necklace that I made always reminds me of you. But you can see how I have the bib component up front and then I've strung it this way with strands. <clears throat> Pardon me. You could do the same thing here with this. I could string it from here. Right? You get the idea that strand would come and then you'd have these in the center. So you could make this piece a little bit longer um, so it hangs a little bit lower on your chest rather than right close up against your neck. But this, it would be cool. I like this. This one that I did with this Modern Woman bib, this has our um, purple mix, I think, in from our Vintage Vines. And um, it's just strung like this. You could do that with either uh, eight, six or eight millimeter lapis or something else up the side. So it doesn't have to have the collar go all the way around. And then you can use these smaller ones for a different piece, right? So um, yeah, I'm digging this, this look a lot. I'm going to take one more photograph of it, you guys before I move on to what we've got next. I hope this is giving you some visual inspiration. Um, it's kind of inspiring me. <laughs> so we'll see in all my copious spare time. But I really, I, I love a statement color. I really, really do. So let me move this stuff over. Let me just pull this in and see here. And also I pulled in these sand cast in the blue. I don't know if these get the love that they should. It's a super saturated, again, a super saturated color like this, these blue ones, but it's kind of magic. I mean, look at that blue. It's the color my mom will laugh. My mom knows what color, uh, that color in my palette, what color that was from. Someday I'll tell you. Or my mom might type it in the comments. You never know. But I do love that royal blue. Um, let me show you my next inspiration. I want to get these back in their little corral. And at home, you know, you can replicate this exercise at home. Get yourself some Tupperware tins, right? Tupperware bins, whatever. And just put your pieces in and don't think about it too much, right? Just put them in like this. Then um, you just start pulling them out and putting together a puzzle like uh, like I did there. And these are called, I think these are called pebbles, right? Janice and, and um, Gita, don't, I, I think these are our, our pebbles um, uh, beads. We have them in silver and we have them in brass. Super old school uh, bead shop bead. I love them. I know, Cindy, I do need a scoop. We have a million scoops in this office, but not one sitting next to me. Yep, and these are the peb pebbles. Pebbles. <coughs> and yes, my mom has it right. Ding, ding, ding. Kate's pageant dress. Someday we'll, we'll tell you that story. Um, was royal blue. Um... Let me, so here's my second bin, all right? We're going to reverse, we're going to change course a little bit, and I want to kind of play around with something like this modern woman bib. So here it is in brass, okay? And what I love about this thing is, again, you could glue 
And of course, it's also the color of the year, Leanne. Of course, that basic blue, of course it is. That ties in perfectly well, okay? So, <clears throat> something like this, what I was thinking was, and I don't know why, I've, I've been thinking kind of, really kind of a architectural kind of pieces, I guess. Wire wrapping or using chain or somehow connecting this carnelian pie to this piece. Isn't this pleasing already? Right, Cindy Brooks all, now we're ducking. Yes, aren't we though? Aren't we? Let me make this a little bit wider so we can see this. I'm gonna take my puzzle pieces out of this bin and I'm just gonna play and we'll see what happens. This is our wood carving piece. Okay, put those there. I got the scarabs. We also have the scarabs in carnelian. One of my favorite, I love these carnelian beads, the, the scarab beads in both the carnelian and in the turquoise. And there's a limited supply of these. I don't know. We have some in stock now, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to get them back in. But this and you guys know I love the 20s and I love that whole Tutankhamun mania um, that kind of came out of the 20s. This, the scarab bead personifies that for sure. Look at that silhouette. Now, I'm gonna do something crazy. Orange, if you don't have orange in your color palettes, kids, get some orange. Don't be afraid of orange. Orange is one of my mom's favorite colors. She had an orange car growing up when we were kids, right? Orange, I look at that pop of color there, right? Now you can always tone that orange down, build that, but this is the um, six millimeter me melon, I think an orange brown wash maybe. You guys can eyeball these and throw up the link for me, but it's a great one. This you could kind of put one below or do smaller drops in between so that more of a toned down orange goes with this kind of brighter orange, right? Or you could pump up the volume and use these, um, the check drops in pumpkin mix, right? You could add those, like right, we could wire wrap those bad boys right there and as long as we're gluing we can glue that scarab to the center and hang some other stuff from it right let me move that there so you can kind of see it but i love this um this silhouette that's happening now we could introduce some red into there. This is a six, and I know you guys, how you guys love Picasso. This is a six millimeter red Picasso fire polish. Let's throw some red in there. My mom says add more metal. You know, Ma, I didn't grab more metal for this one, but I'm gonna throw the pebbles in there because I think the petal, pebbles are cool. Um, and the pebbles, the way they look, they are actually little pebbles. They're like not an oval or a rondelle, but they have a little chunk cut out of them at the top and the bottom all the way around. They're just really cool. Again, an old school bead shop bead for sure. And these are brass. They're solid brass. They're not going to... Um, we have them in silver plate and this solid brass. But look at how great that looks in there. Then you could also use these guys up in the body of the piece. I also grabbed red in those drops. The fire polish drops are really, I think they're good. Look at that. And you can make, maybe I'll put them in the center there. Can you guys see that? Let me push this up. Right, so we can push this color and then that makes these drops, these little brighter drops, kind of work with that. I also grabbed a bright red. This is the um, opaque red. Doesn't get any more of a basic red than this. And you can add that into, into the necklace design of this. 
We can also soften it a little bit and add a freshwater pearl. This is the copper freshwater pearl that I think is kind of cool with it. Um, and then I also grabbed, maybe instead of, if you don't love that red, I grabbed our metallic mix. This is a new one that metallic mix six millimeter fire polish. Look at how great that looks with that. And you can tone it even more. These are the eight millimeter rondelles. Um, Janice, find the link. Um, this one is, I have so many beads out, I can't remember. But it's the eight millimeter fire polish. Um, I know you guys will find it and I'll mention it on air when I see it pop up in the feed. But that looks, I think that looks kind of amazing with those drops. If the red or the orange isn't your bag, I grabbed the rosewood bronze, these guys, right? I could just bring these, that rosewood bronze in there instead of the orange, right? To tone it a little bit more if orange isn't your bag. Or we could start to introduce pieces from our other, our former color palette, the one we were working with before, because look at this guy. How these two, can you see how, and Janice, I know you can find this one, or Gita, I know you can find it. It's the eight millimeter, it's some kind of mix with Picasso on the top. I'm sorry, I have so many beads here. I just can't quite remember everything. I got a chestnut mix. Um, perfect. Ding, ding. Gita wins the race. Chestnut mix. Perfect. And so you could, if that blue is your color, and I like the orange too, Leslie. I'm down with that. But I just want to show you the different personality that comes out when you switch the blue, the blue and the orange. I'm going to take another photo of this so I remember it, okay? Um, but I like that orange too. I think that people are sometimes afraid to use orange because it's orange, you know, it's super bright. So here's this guy and let me throw the orange in this time too. So see, just by a simple change of one color bead, right? See how that just changes it up. Garnet would be nice, Curtis. I agree. I think the, the garnet would be really pretty. I think it would look great. I also, you can also tone that orange. I pulled in, this is that pale peach silver lined alabaster. Right? Those would look really good. I'm going to take another photo of that. Let me uncover that one there. We get that. Let me take a photo of it so we can see it. Um, and that alabaster, again, kind of tones that orange a little bit. Let me put these in my hand, these, this, and this together so you guys can really see it. What a cool mix of beads, right? All right. Let me scoop these guys up and we're going to go to our final color mix. Uh, oh, before I go I, uh, any further with that, I also wanted to show you we have a couple more of those beads or the bibs. We've got this, this size here. It's that smaller. This one's the Modern Woman and you know what? It went right out of my head. I had it on the tip of my tongue, but this is the other bib. Uh, uh, color in or bib in brass and then this one's the flower child the one that I did the earrings out of so this one's also fun and if you want to dial down and not use this modern woman bib that's so big but you could use something that's a little bit smaller um, either of these guys would work as well this one like I say we've used as an earring but it would make a great centerpiece and you can see it has that hole right there that's perfect for you know what gluing. Wouldn't that look great? I think they would look really cool. So it's a good one. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me move this over. 
Let me scoop all of this. I've got to have a scoop here somewhere. Cindy was like, I need a scoop. I do. Here we go. This is better. A little more refined. All right. There we go. A little bit easier. Let me put these back in the tube. Flower Child. Thank you, Janice. That's what this one is. Or no, this one's Flower Child. Janice, isn't it? The the earring one. There's that medium size one that I need to know what that is. Um yeah, it was the Summer of Love earring that I did with this. It was really fun to do, and I'll show you how I do um how I did this gluing in like this. It was it, it was a fun project. And I did this, um, these projects, you can find the projects. I did a bib project uh, a while back. I think Gita linked it over on the Facebook page. If you go to Free Tip Friday, I think I did this one on a Free Tip Friday. Um, and then I did this opulent collar one. I think it was on a Facebook Live. Okay. Boho bib is this one. That's right. This one's Flower Child here, and this one we call Modern Woman is that one. That's right. Okay. So let me put these into the bin again. Put it all in there. And again, when you're at home, get some bins, get a Tupperware bin, go to the dollar store, whatever, find yourself some bins and put your puzzle pieces in the bin just like I do. Okay, that's all, I, and I didn't use everything out of this, right? So now we've covered our carnelian bin and our blue bin, and I could mix and match from this. I could take some um, pieces, components from my carnelian bin, and some uh, pieces from my uh, lapis bin and mix them all up together okay and yeah you know uh, Kim you bring up a really good point about gluing and I should do a whole show and I've done some shows on gluing but I need to do a whole show on gluing a pendant together because it's really not that scary um, you just have to have the right surface you have to kind of know um, what you're doing with the glue and not use too much and let it rest okay those those two um, those tips are good but I'll schedule it for a free tip Friday I think it would be fun to have a free tip fr Friday gluing show okay so here's my last bin and I'll call this kind of maybe the the green the kind of chartreuse not really chartreuse but green and mustard colored bin okay let me dump this out and I pulled again I pulled that um, I had them in brass before, but I pulled it in copper this time. And um, here's the the flower child, the earring component here. But again, I was kind of into that silhouette. Let me get a little bit bigger. That silhouette of this um, 40 millimeter adventuring pie, right? I kind of dig it and you could we could even if we were talking about gluing we could make this slightly different and either glue or wire wrap those two together that might be kind of cool that way or there's a nice surface there to glue it onto. I don't know, what do I see with this? Maybe I see a tassel coming down with this. This is our, um, I think this is serpentine drum. I think this is it. The serpentine drum comes in different flavors of the serpentine. I also grabbed the pagodas. You guys, these are from our vintage finds and if you don't know these, this is a favorite bead of mine. Again, because it creates a really interesting negative space. 
I don't know, you could line them up down there. I could bring them up the sides, which I think is what I really like. But it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And am I worried right now about how I'm going to string this, what I'm going to string this on, even what the clasp is going to be? No, I'm not worried about that at all. All I'm worried about at this moment in time is getting the silhouette right for this. Okay, look at this matte six millimeter, no, matte eight millimeter adventuring. Come to mama. It is gorge. It's just gorgeous. This would look great to put along in there. These are two beads that I think don't get a lot of love, and I wanted to pull them two colors that don't get a lot of love, and I wanted to pull them to the fore, especially, you know, March's flower for March is the daffodil, right? Or the, the what's the other word for daffodil? Ma, not hyacinth. Hyacinth, is that it? That's what also, they're in that family. My mom will know, she's a botanist. But green and yellow are, you know, very daffodil, very March colors. This is our suede gold jonquil. Jonquils, maybe they're called jonquils. Maybe that's it, I don't know. Um, and the, the suede gold um, jonquil and suede gold peridot, I think, are what these two. Yep, Jonquil. Thank you, Jonquil and Perido. Yep. And this, look at how they go. The earthiness of that pagoda and the softness of those beads. Right? So good. Jonquil, yes, perfect. Oh, Narcissus. Maybe that's it. I don't know. All of those. I get all my flowers confused. I added the ivory uh, six millimeter melon and then the matte Persian turquoise bronze six millimeter. So all of these could be, let me pull them all together. They could be kind of mixed, right? In kind of random strands that come together in these pagoda beads. And then that would connect down here to this modern woman bead. And then that could connect in the center. I could bring that pagoda even in the middle with that one. And I could make a tassel. That comes down. I'll push this up. I pulled these padres too in the lettuce. I don't know. I don't, this might have been a slight misstep. I don't know if I love it. But I do. I think I do love the the mustard with that a little bit better, right? Um, and so you could come in and then, you know, use part of these guys down here as a tassel as well. These I could open. And then I could use these mustard drops down at the bottom. It might look kind of cool. I also have these with those green luster drops here. I could put those at the bottom too. I could use these drops also all along in the loops that are opening up with this. I'm going to take a snapshot of this so I have it and then we will um, we'll play around a little more with color because someone was asking about orange. Let's see if we can introduce some orange into this palette, mix up our palettes that we have. Okay, so let me take out, let me first take out the mustard. Where did my triangle go? There we go. And let me grab the orange from this one. I'm grabbing it here out of my box, so bear with me here a second. And I might pull that Jonquil colors out. And maybe I would introduce maybe that red color. 
Let me see. There we go. That melon. And this copper. Yeah, or I could get rid of the green and I could throw in. Yeah, those look nice. And these guys there. What else did I have that was big? I like these wood carving guys, maybe. Those would work, and maybe I'd pull out the pagodas. I don't know. That's not too bad either. I'm gonna take yet another photo of that so we have it, so I don't forget about it. But that's what I do a lot when I'm color paletting and playing around like this. You've got your phone with you, right? Take some photos, do it. I like this kind of mustard and orange palette. It's kind of cool. And then this kind of chartreuse green works a little bit better for me, I think. Come back there. There we go. I think that's cool. Yeah, that orange bead really, it really does pull out the copper. I agree with you, Sherry. It's kind of fun. Let me put this back to its ridge. Let's see, these go over here. Because I want to try throwing the blue in here too, just for you blue fans. Put that back in, put these back in, get rid of the chartreuse, put this back in, and this. Get that suede peridot in there. Now let's go for the blue. <clears throat> Let me get those tides out in that marina color. Yes, look at that. Aren't they? They're magic. And these spindle, I don't know what color spindles these are. Silk something, maybe blue, cobalt something. I don't know. But look at that blue, how nice they are. Let me get it a little bit tighter. But you can't go wrong with blue and green. Let me get them a little further, closer in. And we could maybe even introduce our friends. Then we could get those scarabs back in there with those. I think that would look good. We go ahead and photograph it. There we go. So a lot of these choices, like I said, kids, you can just come in, make your bins. There we go. Get these back, all back in there. I like it. Make your bins and start choosing your puzzle pieces out of your different bins and mix it and match it and play around with what works for you. At this stage, all we're doing, there we go, that, I really like the way that mustard looks. All we're doing is color paletting, right? That's it. We're just playing with the colors. We're not worried about what, if, when, what this piece might become. Because once you hit this colorway, a colorway that inspires you, speaks to you in some way, then the design really starts to take shape as you lay it out, right? And so something like this, again, I might take a cue from this finished Modern Woman bib that I did here and attach pieces along the bottom of this and maybe up here at the top, instead of a single strand, maybe I would do multiple strand pieces like that. But again, putting those pieces together and looking at the shape that occurs, that comes up from all of this, I think is um, just good color exercises. Plus, it gets your hands on your bead stash. You know, at Bead Shop, we love it. We want you to buy beads all the time, right? Because that keeps us in business and it makes us happy. But you also, you guys, need to get your hands on your bead stash and use them and look at them and see how they play together in the mix. There's that wood, that robust round wood also looks really good in there. I wanted to add it. 
Um, and you can uh, then supplement with different colors and things that you see at Bead Shop. Take a deep dive into um, different um, categories that you don't usually look at, right? Um, when you go to our website, you go and you click on beads and gems. We have different categories for you to, to look at. You know, you can sort by color. You can do all kinds of things to really kind of work your way into some of the different beads that you have on we have on the site. If it's a color that speaks to you, but you're not quite sure what how you're going to use it, grab one. Grab a strand because, um, you know, sometimes they don't come around again and it's a color that you'll really like. This is, someone asked, the suede gold peridot. That's what this is. And the suede gold peridot, you can see I'm going to hold it kind of tight up. See how it has that slight gold luster, that suede gold coating over the top. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so this was our last bin, our final color palette. And so these six aughts, these six aughts are the opaque mustard. It's six dash one, two, three, three, a favorite of mine. And they go perfectly with the mustard drops. The mustard drops are the check glass and they're shiny. And then the Japanese seed beads are matte and it goes well. Okay. Um, so let me pull this up. Put all of this in. And I will show you, let me put these seed beads back in here so I don't, it doesn't all end in tears with them going all over the floor. Let me put those in. So one last look, these are the last looks of these bins. And check our Instagram feed, you guys. Do you follow us on Insta? If you don't, it's beadshop.com on Insta. We post some fun stuff on Insta that we don't post anywhere else. You'll, you're going to get, Jordan just did it. She's going to, Jordan did the um, monthly mix for March, and she's posting a preview on our Instagram. So you'll see that later today. So follow us on Insta if you Insta. Um, at beadshop.com and you'll see I'm going to post these color palettes and stuff up there too so you can see them over on our Insta. Um, I did want to show you um, the completed um, pieces from last week and I'll leave these up here just a second if anybody's taking screenshots um, uh, to, uh, to do that now. Um, let me see. I'm going to check and see. Um, so you guys can look at that. And then I want to show you, just before I, before we call it a day, these are the finished pieces that Brittany, Brittany, bless her heart, finished everything for me after Wednesday's broadcast. She did a beautiful job. This was Brittany's colorway that she pulled, and we're calling it uh, Perfect Pairing, I think, is what we called it. It's up on the blog, all of the ingredients for this one. Um, this was the Entwined project, and again, she used the 0.5 millimeter leather with that one. And then she also finished this one. This was with the 6 millimeter garnet, but I wanted to show you how she did that. With, um, with these. So these will be up, these two will be up as projects on the website soon, and this was entwined from there. So I'll let you see that. I'll take them. We've got a, we've got a visitor. We've had some, thank you, Jordan. Okay. We've had some um, special requests. Come on, babes. There we go. You've had some special requests for this man. There he is, our big boy, our Alfred. There's Alfie. So thanks for Jordan for grabbing him. He was in on Friday. You can see the, the <laughs> he's like, wait a minute. You need to look at the camera there. There we go. Everybody can see him. There's, there's the boy. What do they say? They say never do a show with kids or animals, right? There he is. You guys can see how big he is. Whoops, I'm cutting off his head. There we go. There he is. Huh. He's not spoiled at all, but he's in the office today hanging out wreaking havoc with he and the pupster, he and Casper, 
are having fun. Well, I wanted to mention you guys, uh, today is, there Alfred, sit. There we are. Perfect. Good boy. Um, I'll show you where he's sitting. He's nestled right under the camera. <laughs> there he is. There he is. He's doing very well. Look at that naughty tail. Um, I wanted to mention uh, today, it is February 28th, 2020, and tomorrow is Leap Day. We get a February 29th, so all weekend, you guys, we are doing um, a, a big sale, and it's a, a sale of the, uh, that doesn't come around that often. Um, this percentage-wise in our, it's up on our website on the front page as well as you got it in our newsletters, your newsletters this morning. This is a screenshot of the newsletter. So if you are watching today, February 29th, or through, if you watch this episode, through Monday, the 2nd of March, um, this sale, Leap 29, goes through March 2nd at midnight Pacific time. If you use the coupon code LEAP29 at checkout, everything's going to be on sale. So now is a great time to stock up for your palette stash and you can uh, look at a lot of the stuff that I did uh, today, look in the vintage finds, look in the check glass, all that good stuff um, that's all right in over there and you'll be able to, um, to grab some things for your palette stash for sure. One more peek at Alfred sitting by those beads and I'm right here. So thanks again, you guys, for joining me for this fun free tip Friday. I love paletting, <coughs> pardon me, paletting with you guys. It was a lot of fun to play with color. We'll have some of these um, palettes up on our Instagram feed for you later to look at. Uh, next week on Bead Shop Live, I am kind of going back to basics with Memory Wire. And I've palleted a really fun color palette that I think you guys are going to like. So if you're an old hand at Memory Wire, awesome. I've got a couple of good tips that I think you guys are going to be uh, liking uh, to work with. If you haven't worked with Memory Wire, this is a show you're going to want to watch. Memory Wire is super fast, super easy, and um, it's really fun. It's a really fun product to use when you want to string up your color palettes and not have to think about it too much. So that's coming up on Wednesday. So we've got also a lot of fun stuff planned for you for March, because I don't know if you knew this, but March is National Craft Month. So you're going to celebrate National Craft Month with BeadShop.com all month long. So if you have not signed up for your newsletters, you guys, go to beadshop.com. You can get all of the information on the project and the products that I used today on the website. You can also sign up for our newsletter for all of the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. And again, we really appreciate you sharing and giving likes and thumbs ups and hearts and shares all of those things to our videos, it helps us get the word out to you. And through your um, patronage and your business, it allows us to continue to do what we love doing, which is designing with beads. So thank you so very, very much. So on behalf of the whole Bead Shop crew and Janice and Gita over in Denmark and all y'all who are watching, thanks so much. And I will see you on Wednesday for another episode of Bead Shop Live. I'll see you guys next week. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.